story to tell. On September the 9th, 1964, the first YE-155 P-1 interceptor fighter aircraft took off. After completing the test program, it was designated MiG-25. The MiG-25 twin-engine interceptor is a high-altitude, hypersonic-speed aircraft, nicknamed Foxbat in the West, and is a third-generation fighter aircraft. This is a type of aircraft with many unique characteristics, setting many world records, some of which have yet to be surpassed. The MiG-25 was officially put into service with the Soviet Air Force in May 1972. In total, from 1966 to 1985, the Gorky Aircraft Factory assembled 1,000 186 MiG-25 aircraft, with many modifications. A part of the aircraft has been exported to countries such as Algeria, Bulgaria, Iraq, Iran, Libya and Syria. The Soviet Union has been working on new interceptors since the early 1960s. At this point, the main efforts of the OKB-155 Experimental Design Bureau focused on two projects. Modified, renewed MiG-21 fighter aircraft and built a completely new type of fighter aircraft reaching speeds up to 3,000 km per hour at an altitude of 20,000 meters. Initially, the MiG-25 was created as a response to the arrival of new US military aircraft. Its primary mission was to intercept new B-58 supersonic bombers and other versions of this aircraft, as well as the promising North American Aviation XB-70 Valkyrie strategic bomber and the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird strategic supersonic reconnaissance aircraft. American aviation programs were expected to triple the speed of sound. That was the reason why Mikoyan Gurevich Bureau had to research and build a new aircraft capable of Mark III. To meet the requirements of speed and high takeoff weight, the MiG-25 was fitted with two Chumansky R-15B-300 afterburning turbojet engines. The MiG-25's maximum takeoff weight was 41 tons. The MiG-25 was the first Soviet interceptor that could reach a maximum speed of Mark 2.83 or 3,000 kilometers per hour. The plane seems to be born to set records, primarily due to its amazing speed and altitude characteristics. Many world records have been set during testing. In total, the Soviet test pilots have set 38 world aviation records for the speed and rate of climb, of which there are three absolute records. Although, when the MiG-25 began mass production, a number of aircraft continued to be used for testing, including setting new world records. For example, on May 17, 1975, the MiG-25 had several more records for climb rate. Under the control of pilot Alexander Fedotov, MiG-25 conquered an altitude of 25,000 meters in no less than 2 minutes 34 seconds, while the time to climb to a height of 35,000 meters was 4 minutes 11.7 seconds. So far, some records have not been broken. The most famous is the high altitude record for jet-powered aircraft. The absolute world record was set on August 31, 1977 
again by test pilot Alexander Fredotov. The MiG-25 interceptor has reached a height of 37,650 meters. The new Soviet interceptor aircraft was born during the military conflict between Egypt and Israel from 1967 to 1970. In Egypt, the MiG-25R and MiG-25RB were tested. The MiG-25RB was the most modern reconnaissance bomber of the time. In addition to photographic and radio reconnaissance, the MiG-25RB was able to bomb enemy ground targets. According to the official website of the MiG Group, the concept of a reconnaissance attack complex was first introduced in the Soviet Union with the MiG-25RB and its next generations. This concept was many years ahead of its time and it was not until the late 20th century that it became popular in the world military aviation industry. The tests of Soviet interceptors in Egypt took place from October the 10th, 1971 to March 1972. During this time, the MiG-25 conducted reconnaissance flights over the Sinai Peninsula, which was then occupied by the Israeli army. According to Israel, unidentifiable aircraft flew over the Sinai Peninsula on April and May 1972. And for a long time, the Israeli military was unable to identify the type of aircraft that appeared. They gave them various names, such as MiG-21 Alpha or X-500. The Israeli Air Force dispatched Mirage 3 and F-4 fighters to intercept the MiG-25. But these efforts proved fruitless. None of the missiles hit the Soviet plane. Israel also tried to use the US Hawk air defense system, but the situation did not improve. It was also useless against the MiG-25. According to the test pilots in Egypt, the flights were carried out at full capacity, maximum speed, at an altitude of 17,000 to 23,000 meters. After three to four minutes of takeoff, the plane accelerated to Mark 2.5. No aircraft could keep up with the Foxbat of the Soviet Union. The MiG-25's engines consumed half a ton of fuel every minute, so the weight of the aircraft was reduced. It became lighter and could be accelerated to Mark 2.8. The MiG-25 was also actively used by the Iraqi Air Force in the 1980-1988 Iran-Iraqi War. The MiG-25 was used by the Iraqis for reconnaissance and interception of enemy aerial targets and for bombing. The first MiG-25s were received by the Iraqi Air Force since the beginning of the conflict in 1979. Due to the lack of pilots, it was not until the middle of the war that the MiG-25 was widely used. Even so, it was the MiG-25 that became the most effective aircraft used by Iraq in terms of win rate. During the Iran-Iraq war, Iraqi pilots won 19 victories with Foxbat and suffered only two interceptors and two reconnaissance bombers. During the early stages of the Persian Gulf War, 1990-1991, the Iraqi MiG-25RB flew many reconnaissance flights in Kuwait, while the Arab nation's air defence forces could do nothing about them. Lieutenant pilot Viktor Ivanovich Belenko has strongly influenced the fate of the MiG-25. On September the 6th, 1976, the pilot defected in a MiG-25 
and landed at a Japanese airport near Hakodate. Belenko defecting during a training flight. After separating from his comrades, the pilot brought the plane down to an altitude of about 30 meters, thus avoiding detection by both Soviet and Japanese military radar. They only discovered the plane when the pilot raised its altitude to about 6,000 meters. Japanese fighters were then dispatched to intercept. Viktor Belenko once again brought the plane down to an altitude of 30 meters and disappeared from the Japanese radar screen. Initially, the pilot intended to land at Shitose Air Base, but due to the lack of fuel, he was forced to land at the nearest airport in Hakodate City. Eventually, the MiG-25 landed, but the runway was not long enough for it, so the MiG-25 crashed out of the runway, rushing to the edge of the airport. On the way, the interceptor destroyed two airport antennas and crossed a 200 meter field. The aircraft immediately became a target of interest for the US military. They sent the interceptor to a US airbase aboard a Lockheed C-5 Galaxy military transport plane. The new Soviet aircraft was thoroughly researched by the Americans. Studies on this plane have shown that the West's preconceptions were wrong. Previously, foreign military experts considered the MiG-25 to be a multi-role fighter, but this hypersonic aircraft turned out to be a dedicated high-altitude interceptor. For this task, its structural characteristics and technical features were the best. Foreign observers all agree that the MiG-25 was the world's most advanced interceptor fighter. Although the radar system of the MiG-25 had shortcomings, the avionics and batteries were primitive, there was no target selection mode, far inferior to the F-4 fighter jet. Overall, however, it was still superior to Western counterparts. The overall integration of the autopilot, weapon control systems, and ground-based attack navigation systems was considered comparable to the systems of the West at that time. The Americans also realized that the engines built by the Soviet Union were superior to the US in terms of fuel efficiency. For countries pursuing a market economy, this was an important criterion that many years ago the Soviet Union did not pay special attention to. The particularly valuable data the Americans and their allies had was the complete heat-seeking system of the MiG-25. The information obtained is useful in the creation of surface-to-air and air-to-ground missiles. The Soviet Foreign Ministry reached an arrangement to return the aircraft to the Soviet Union, but at that time, on November 15, 1976, the Americans had all the necessary information. Japan did not return the aircraft's electronic equipment, especially the identification friend or foe system. The fact that all MiG-25 information fell into the hands of potential Soviet adversaries affected the aircraft's fate. On November 4th, 1976, the Soviet government decided to build a new version, but it took two years to complete the testing and put into mass production. For two years, Soviet aircraft designers and engineers had been trying to replace the entire core of the interceptor. It was not until 1978 that the MiG-25 PD and MiG-25 PDS were introduced at Gorky. My video of the Soviet MiG-25 answer. Thank you for watching. You find this video interesting. 
please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos.